Scanning of the breast and axilla. In real-time examination with a linear probe for breast scanning, we can only scan a slice of the breast each time. This slice is approximately 5 centimeters long and only 1 millimeter wide. For this reason, we should scan the breast in an organized way in order to fully examine the whole area. We can use either sagittal, transverse or radial scans. This demonstration is a suggestion only, meaning that you may find a better way of doing this or you may be taught otherwise. There is no contraindication to any of them as long as we cover the whole breast and the results are reproducible. Positioning the patient The patient is in the supine position with the arms elevated behind the head. This way we put tension in the pectoralis muscles. We flatten and fixate the breast against the chest wall. The same position is used in breast surgery and this gives us the benefit of reproducing the ultrasound findings in the operating theatre. Flattening of the breast reduces the tissue thickness, improves sound penetration, reduces acoustic shadow and provides a better image. In women with large breasts, a wedged pillow is placed behind the shoulder of the examined side to minimize tissue thickness. In larger breasts, part of the parenchyma may fall laterally and we may need to shift the patient even more laterally. The examiner is sitting at the height of the patient with the patient as close to the edge of the bed as possible, bringing her body close to the examiner. This setting will help us to have a better grip of the transducer. The probe is gripped with all fingers at the base, resting the examiner's forearm at the patient's torso. Remember to orientate the probe at the right direction with the head of the woman in order to avoid confusion. The transducer is moved by flexing the wrist only in order to follow the convex of the breast. We should feel the probe as a continuity of our hand so we can apply gentle pressure to keep the contact with the skin as we are sliding across the breast contours. It should also give us a sense of palpation so we can combine the ultrasound with the clinical evaluation. The pressure should be such to maintain a firm contact with the skin but not to cause any discomfort to the woman. At any point we can apply more pressure to access the compressibility of the inframammary structures, helping us differentiate the cystic or solid lesions and the normal structure from a tumour. Glandular and fatty tissues are compressible, but solid tumours are not. In cases of increased attenuation, we can differentiate the artefacts from a sound absorbing tumour by applying more pressure. We start by applying an amount of gel to the nipple, which we will later spread across the whole breast. First we take a good look at the nipple area. This will give us a good image of the size of the breast and we can estimate the distance between the skin and the pectoralis muscle. Knowing this, we can apply zoom to our screen in order to maximize the field of our view. At all points of the examination, we should make sure that we have a good view of the structures between the skin and the muscle. Holding the probe vertically to the skin, following the shape of the breast. We start by applying the probe vertically to the skin at the 12 o'clock position on the nipple area and then move upwards until we reach the edge of the breast. Then we move laterally towards the edge of the pectoralis muscle. Then we move gently towards the sternum observing the harmonic movement of the structures, looking for anything that breaks this continuity. We advance to the medial part of the breast and follow this plane until we reach the parasternal area. Then having the ribs as a guide, we move downwards until the rib we see at the bottom of the screen comes to the top. This way we can overlap the scanning area and make sure that we cover the entire breast. 
we continue laterally again until we reach the edge of the muscle when we see the ribs and we use them again as a guide to move our plane one step down. With the same technique we continue until the whole breast is scanned, roughly three to four planes. For the less experienced examiners it is recommended that we perform the scan twice in order not to miss any minor findings.